Hello, welcome to today's video, today the goal will be to create a complete heater control, including PID control. We will look at how to connect the heating element to the circuit, connect it to the Arduino, program the menu, and put it all into functionality. As a whole, we should get a complete connection for the possibility of creating a device, for example, to create filament from PET bottles. Ok, let's go. We will connect everything again at the beginning. Already from the previous two parts, where we first looked at how to connect the thermistor NTC3950, which is used for example for Ender, and also how to connect the rotary encoder KX040. You can find the link to the parts in the top right, or in the description videos. Now I have already prepared from the previous parts and now I will connect the MOSFET type N. I use IRL2203N type N and it works well, it does not overheat. He could also use for example, IRF520, this MOSFET has enough load capacity to switch smaller heaters and is Arduino compatible. Its control voltage is within the range that the Arduino can generate. And or, IRLZ44N, is another popular MOSFET for switching smaller loads using Arduino. It has a high load capacity and is easy to control with Arduino. We will connect a resistor, here I use 150 ohms, in truth it probably won't be needed here, it is only there to limit the current, the MOSFET by itself will not take almost anything. We connect the gate to digital pin 6. The source to the heater and the drain to the ground, just as we connect the ground to 12 volts and the source to the Arduino. We have the connections done and now let's get to the code. At the beginning we define three libraries, display libraries and the PID library, but more on that later. Next we define the variables and finally the display. In setup we again define the display, the buttons that we dealt with in the last part, and lastly the PID calculation. Don't worry, we'll talk more about that later. Then we have functions for the rotary encoder and other related functions for menu control. A more detailed explanation would take a long time, so I hope this is enough. Here we have other variables that are extra, these are only for plotting for the chart. They determine the highest and lowest temperature values for us, we'll look at that later. There is also a function that lists all the necessary parameters for the graph and temperature monitoring. Here we get the temperature and then convert it to degrees Celsius. Here again, the PID calculation. And we also have a delay that slows down the whole program a bit. And we get to menu 0, that is, the basic menu. Here we write down the current temperature and the set one. Here is the button press function for the menu. The second menu, where it is possible to change the desired temperature. In the next three menus, we can change the parameter for tuning K, P, K, D, and K, I. And that's all from the code. Now let's look back at the variables. Are you interested in the variables for the temperature sensor? We talked about this in the video about the temperature sensor. Here you can define the pins for the rotary encoder. The pins you use are next important for you. 4 pin 6. That is, the PWM pin. Always use a pulse width modulation pin. These are the pins that have a wave next to the number. They allow you to variably define the heating output. Here you can set the default desired temperature. And here are the values that need to be adjusted for your parameters, they are used for PID power regulation. And now what is PID control? 
PID stands for Proportional Integral Derivative Controller. It is a controller that is commonly used in automation and process control. A PID controller combines three basic elements, proportional, integral, and derivative, to control an output based on the difference between the actual state of the system and the desired state. Proportional, this element reacts to the current error between the actual state and the target state, generating an output signal dependent on the magnitude of this error. The larger the error, the larger the output signal. Integral, the integral component follows the course of time and integrates the error signal, which reduces the permanent error, so-called offset, between the actual and the target state. This element is used to remove long-term errors. Derivative, the derivative component responds to the rate of change of the error. It helps stabilize the system and minimizes overshoot that can be caused by rapid changes in error. The combination of these three components of the PID controller allows it to respond to different types of errors and optimize the output signal to achieve stable and accurate control in many different systems. In simpler terms, this is a system that should guarantee you, or rather calculate, how much power you need to give in order to always reach the same temperature values. Let's give an example on our device. Thanks to the width modulation on pin 6, we can determine how much power should go to the heating element. Here we can specify a value from 0 to 255. Depending on which number we choose, this is the performance. If we choose 0, we have no power. If 255, the power is maximum. Here in the listing we can see how much power the Arduino is releasing. The problem is that it is actually not possible to keep the heating element at the same constant temperature all the time. And why? As we try to heat up to get closer to our desired temperature, heating block and heating element, including hardware, will always have some inertia. This means that if we start heating when we are approaching 50 degrees and turn off the heating, the temperature will increase even more by inertia. That is why we use width modulation, where we gradually reduce the power before reaching it so that we do not unnecessarily exceed the required temperature and also that we reach it at all. The PID regulation itself, as already mentioned, consists of three parts, proportional, PK, integrated, PI, and derivative, PD. In order for the regulator to regulate us correctly and thus achieve the desired constant temperature as much as possible, it is necessary to set KP, KD, and KI, can be found in the code here. These are my values that work pretty well for me. It always depends on your needs, how much precision you need, according to my values I'm plus or minus around half a degree which is good enough for me for now. Setting the right parameters can take some time, not everyone will understand this system right from the start. There are two options, the first is manual setting. In short, it's trial and error, you try to set each value separately a. By the result you can see if you are getting close to your desired result. The second option is to use, for example, the Arduino PID Autotune library. It should set the values for you. I also programmed the graphic output option here. We see the PID value, which we can hide in the graph, but it will be useful in the serial monitor. For information, how much heat? Next is temperature. Then the reference temperature, it is here only for clarity. Minimum temperature, it shows the lowest temperature reached in the cycle and the maximum temperature, i.e. the maximum temperature in the cycle. And finally, deviation, which determines the difference between the maximum and minimum temperature in the cycle. The set temperature is added here for clarity in the graph. Using this graph, one can better modify and monitor how the system behaves. Let's go over the general procedure and the meaning of the individual members. Proportional member, KP. It affects how strongly the controller reacts to the difference between the actual value and the target value. Procedure, start with a low value, e.g. 0.1, and gradually increase. With a higher value, the error response will be more aggressive. Higher values of KP cause a faster response to deviation. Integral term, it affects the controller's ability to eliminate long-term static deviations. Procedure, start with a low value, e.g. 0.01, and gradually increase. Higher values of key increase the power of long-term variation regulation and can reduce the residual error. Derivative term, KD. It affects the response to the rate of change of the error. 
Procedure, start with the low value, e.g. 0, and gradually increase. Higher KD values stabilize the system response and can minimize persistent oscillations. Gradually change individual values and monitor the system's response. Test each member separately and observe the effect it has on the behavior of the regulator. Repeat testing and fine-tuning until you achieve stable and reliable PID controller behavior for your particular application. If you have the same system as me, the same values as mine should work for you. Otherwise, you need to try. Set KI and KD to zero and gradually increase, for example, from 1 KD. Always wait some time for the change to take effect. In my code, the change for the PID count is overwritten as soon as you change the value. Hope this video tutorial helped you. If you have any questions or additions to my solution, let me know in the comments. For now, see you next time.